I'm glad you came. Welcome back aboard. Hey, don't mention it. As a host, it would be pretty embarrassing to continue letting my guests be put on the spot like that. I can't go getting too caught up in my own reputation, though. That's certainly not how the Crux made it to where we are today. As the head of the fleet, my task is to keep us on the right course, no matter how turbulent the seas may become. But then again, the crew isn't usually this riled up. It's not that they're arrogant, they're just bubbling with ambition, that's all. Their excitement today comes from their great respect for you, both your strength and your character. So please, don't take it the wrong way. Oh, is that so? Well, it just so happens that we're doing some recruitment and training for new crew members while we're back. It'll be a first-rate chance to learn the life of a sailor. Since you're interested, why don't you come along and experience a sailor's life firsthand? I'm curious to see if you'll take the sea by storm in the same way you have on land. <laughs> nice. <laughs> come with me. Let's see how big of a splash you can manage. Chief Mate Juza's breaking in the newcomers, but I think we can spare you the tedium of that. After this, the new crew members will be arranged into two teams for more specialized training, according to their own aptitudes and the needs of the fleet. One team will learn comprehensive survival skills, including maritime emergency rescue, marine meteorology, psychological counseling, and so on. They will serve as the support team for the fleet, ensuring safe navigation. That's why we call them the Shield of the Crux. <laughs> That's right. You catch on quick. As one might expect, we call the other team the Spear of the Crux, because they'll be learning about naval warfare. They'll make up the armed portion of our crew. Also, they're responsible for handling the fleet's cargo deals. So, what do you think? Which team is for you? <laughs> you truly are an adventurer at heart. Let's start with the fundamentals for any armed crew member. Basic boat handling. Follow me. These are some older skirmish boats that we keep on the Alcora's backup. Although they've been made redundant by newer models, now they're still fully kitted out. They're perfect for when we need to do simulated battles as part of crew training. <laughs> Disappointed? So this isn't quite on the scale that you had in mind, huh? To be honest, the Alcor going into battle is the last thing I'd ever want to see. In fact, out of all the confrontations we've ever had, almost all were resolved by negotiation. Only when negotiations fail do we consider deploying our armed fighters and skirmish boats, and they alone are enough to handle most situations. The only reason the Alcor would ever need to open fire would be if it were a fight to the death. The Alcor serves only two purposes, to deter or to destroy. We are an armed fleet with a strong sense of justice, not war-hungry lunatics. We're very careful about determining when to use force and exactly what level of force to use. All of this to say that mastering a small attack craft is quite enough for new crew members. Do you have any experience piloting small armed vessels? You mean you can do the jobs of a helmsman and a gunner simultaneously? Wow, that's a, quite an achievement. Even in the Crux, there are few who can do that. Seems like you're a natural. In that case, I'll skip the basics on how to operate your craft. The goal of this exercise is simple. Steer your skirmish boat along the prescribed route and return here within the time limit. You can start when you're ready. I'll be waiting here so I can observe your skills.
Nicely done! That was a joy to watch! Perfect timing on the turns, you kept your craft stable on the straightaway... It was like watching a well-rehearsed show. <laughs> Alright, it's high time I introduced you to some of the more serious business that the Crux takes on. Come with me, we're going to Liyue Harbor. You may be aware that as an armed fleet, the Crux is kind of like the maritime equivalent of a guard for hire. We work as an armed carrier, earning our keep by successfully delivering the goods entrusted to us from A to B. Aside from that, though, there is also one other important way we make income. Actually, it's trading in certain kinds of goods. Hey, my hotshot accountant. Nice of you to join us. <laughs> Cut it out, boss. Juza sent me here with a message. He says preparations are now underway. If you give me the all clear, I'll head straight over. Okay. Be careful. Well, she has something to take care of. Mora Grubber was right, though. The other important side to our business, the less official side, is doing exactly what merchants do. Importing here, exporting there. The only difference between us and regular merchants is that our transactions aren't entirely above board. You'll see what I mean by that shortly. I'm taking you to see one such transaction for yourself. Come on, let's go meet our trading partner for the day. Fresh seafood! Fresh seafood! Catch it while you can! What do you have? Hello there! Here at Nay's Professional Fishmongers, we've got everything you could ask for! So what do you need? I want a bass head with all the teeth removed. If there's a single tooth in there, I don't want it. Ah! You know bass have pharyngeal teeth, right? In the throat? How do you expect me to get all those out? Then I'll have a bass trunk with two swim bladders. Again, if it's short by one swim bladder, it's not the bass I want. You're not making this easy for me. One bass means one swim bladder. Afraid that's not up to me. Okay, then I'll take a bass tail with scales that are yellow on the outside, black on the inside. Also, it's gotta have a total of 81 scales. That's seven times seven, no more, no less. What kind of fish scales are yellow outside and black inside? You sure this is a fish you're talking about? In any case, you can try all you want, but seven times seven is never gonna get you 81. Pardon my asking, but you're not a fish expert, are you? I'm sorry, ma'am, but uh, I'm afraid I don't have any of the things you're looking for. 
Look, I'm a professional. So are most of the people I serve. I can accommodate anything they ask for. Seems you two are amateurs. So I'm sorry, but you'll have to go someplace else. Anywhere you'd recommend? <laughs> like I said, Nay's professional fishmongers is for professionals. For amateurs, the place to go to would be wise amateur fishmongers. I bet you're wondering why that guy was saying he didn't have what we wanted. That was just the first step in the transaction to confirm our identity. The real deal will come later. Fresh seafood! Fresh seafood! Come take a look! Is this wise amateur fishmongers? That's the one. We have all kinds of amateur stuff here. The more amateur, the more of it we got. What would you like? We'd like a bass head. No problem. Ours are all toothless, mind you. And a bass trunk. Oh, no problem. I'll stick an extra swim bladder in there for you. On the house. And a tail. Sure thing. I'll paint the scales yellow on the outside and black on the inside, so you can tell at a glance, this ain't no ordinary fishtail. If it's seven times seven you want, I can do you 81. 138, or even 648. <laughs> it's up to you. Great. I like your style. We have a deal. I appreciate your patronage. Please, take your order to our warehouse manager over there. <laughs> a real amateur, if I've ever met one. Proud to have you as a customer. No, we don't have the fish here. All fish sold at Wise Amateur Fishmongers are still swimming in the sea. Once we get the order in from the customer, we go fish it out for them. The warehouse handles that side of things. Pay first, then we bring you the goods. That way you get the freshest catch! Are you two here to collect your order, huh, Bade? <clears throat> yes, sir. We're here about that bass. I didn't expect you to come in person, but we still need to follow procedure. The bass you want is not a standard specimen. Our fishermen need to wait for the right moment to catch it. You know the rules, I take it? Of course. Oh, <laughs> well, as you know, timing and location are everything when it comes to fishing. You have to wait till all the conditions are just right. That means the tide, the moon, and the wind. So, let me ask you this. When will the tide come in? The fishing song will sound out at midnight. How drunk will the moon be before the party's over? It won't stop while the Star of Death shines. I see, yes. Uh, which way will the sea breeze be blowing? The breeze should be bound for Guyon. All right, then. Well received. I'll go and make arrangements. Uh, <clears throat> Great. I think that wraps up everything we needed to do in Liyue Harbor. Let's head back and wait for the delivery. The three people we just met are our business partners. Nay's professional fishmongers and wise amateur fishmongers are just cover names. The bass, obviously, is the code name for the goods. The numbers of teeth, swim bladders, and scales all represent different specifications. 
Meanwhile, the conversation I had with the warehouse keeper was the instructions for the deal itself. Let me translate it for you. Tonight at midnight, the deal will take place in Guyan Stone Forest. The Alcor will wait there as long as needed. As for what the actual goods are, well, you'll see tonight. What if I were to say yes? What would you do then? <laughs> Thank you. But don't worry, everything will be fine. I deeply value you as a friend, but ultimately, you're not with the crux. I definitely don't want to cause you any trouble just because you hung out with me. So rest assured, we haven't broken any laws. <laughs> At least not today. Captain Bado, you gave me quite the surprise when you showed up in person earlier today. Well, my friend is visiting, so I wanted to show him how the Crux handles some of its important business. I see. You two must be close. You got that right. Now, down to business. Have you brought the goods? Yep, all here. Please, feel free to take stock. Stop. Nobody move. We have received certain information pertaining to a potential illegal business transaction at this location. Apologies, Captain Beto, but I'm going to need to inspect those goods. Oh? An illegal business transaction, you say? Well, all the goods are here. If you have any suspicions, please inspect them at your leisure. C Captain, everything's been checked. It's just a bunch of potatoes, flour, and so on. And all the paperwork checks out, too. Huh? Everything's been checked thrice over. There's not a single contraband item here. The paperwork was approved by the Ministry of Civil Affairs, and the tax declarations are all in order. Looks like you've managed to clear everything up. I suppose we can put this down as a simple misunderstanding? Yes, uh, apologies. This was a mistake on our end. Come on, let's go. <laughs> Bravo, Captain Beto. This was rather ingenious. Seems like your friend still has a little catching up to do. <laughs> I know you have a lot of questions. Come on, take a walk with me and I'll lay it all out for you. Well, I'll leave you both to it. Captain Beto, I look forward to doing business with you again. Take care. You probably thought that there was some sort of nefarious business going on behind all the secrecy today. The truth is, that was exactly what I wanted the Ministry of Civil Affairs to believe. What you might not know is that I, as the leader of the Crux fleet, and you, the great hero of Liyue Harbor, have both been on the Ministry of Civil Affairs watch list for a long time. In other words, whenever you or I crop up in Liyue Harbor, it almost always draws their attention. Not that there's any animosity behind it, mind you. In their words, it's a security precaution to prevent people like us from causing unnecessary trouble. <laughs> oh, I have no qualms about that. They're just doing their job, keeping the land safe. But, how does that saying go again? Ah, yes. Sometimes, the closer you are to something, the less you can see. Did you figure it out yet? That's right, Mora Grubber, the accountant. With you, me, and a few sacks of potatoes and flour serving as a front, the deal she's overseeing on her end should go off without a hitch. After all, the Ministry of Civil Affairs sent the Millilith to us. Hmm. 
Looking at the time, it should be any second now. Look, that's the signal. <laughs> Tonight's real deal is officially done. Do you have any more questions? You're right. Never underestimate her. But as long as we don't take things too far, she won't look into it too closely. She knows that neither you nor I would do anything to harm Liyue. In any case, there's another higher level watch list at the Ministry of Civil Affairs above the one we're on. It's top secret. Even I don't know whose names are on it. But I do know that the individuals and organizations on that list are the ones the Qixing are really wary of. <laughs> I've gotten off topic. On some level, Ningguang and I are actually business partners too. Reason being, I'm the only one who can get her some of the more obscure treasures she wants. It's... complicated. All you need to know is that what might be easily attainable for some people can often be a lifesaver for others who can't get their hands on it. That's where we come in. It's as simple as that. <laughs> you still have some important things to take care of, don't you? As long as you don't know what I was referring to, you'll be safe. So, I'm sorry, but I can't tell you for now. Of course, if the day comes when you've traveled to every corner of the world, found your sibling, and neatly tied up all your loose ends along the way, you're welcome to come back here and I'll tell you all about it. You'll always be welcome in the Crux fleet. I hope I get to see you on board again someday.